Thank you so much. Good morning. I think we're still in the morning hours. It hasn't turned noon yet. So I'm absolutely thrilled to be here for two primary reasons. As Vivek ji said, we launched this wonderful book last year and I was present for the launch event. And this book was the first step to educate, to inform, to empower women to come forward, to share stories, to normalize conversations, to let women know that they were not alone. And today, as Vivek ji said, it's the next chapter for the next chapter. And it gives me so much optimism to see a company like Abbott build forward on what they've done with just launching the book. And today we're doing this amazing unveiling of this wonderful thing that we will tell you about later that will actually progress and take the conversations that have happened in this book, take it forward to the next step and start normalizing conversations around menopause. So that's the first reason why I'm so thrilled to be here. The second reason is the last time I mentioned this and I was extremely delighted to see the three or four men that were in the audience the last time. So I can't tell you how happy it makes me to see men represented in much larger numbers this time around. Because to be really honest, yes, this conversation is about something that women go through, but this entire event is really actually for the men. So all the men that are here, members of the media, all of them, thank you for being here. And we really hope that all of you who are present here today will take the information, the message that is shared today forward and outside of here into your communities, into your homes, into your families, because that's really what we need today. So to start off things, if I might, I actually want to go back to this book. I've read it a couple of times myself, um, and I want to read a little excerpt from it. Not long, just a paragraph, but I want to read that for you. So this is a piece written by Alexandrina, who's 51 years old, from Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And she says, Men should be sensitive and supportive toward women going through menopause. Sadly, that's not always the case, particularly in my household. My husband, for example, thinks it's funny when I start to sweat. Usually, when we're watching TV, I'll throw off the blanket and begin to fan myself frantically. And he'll howl with laughter, like he's enjoying every moment. So right here, let's begin this conversation. <laughs> so if I might, since I have commented on the men that are present here today, if you don't mind, not to put you on the hot seat or under the spotlight, but I'd like to ask the men that are present here um, just one or two questions to begin. Can Absolutely, I? Absolutely, yes. Okay, super. So let's okay. Let's let's start with the gentleman with the lovely salt and pepper hair. He looked like he looks like he may have had some life experience. So we'll ask him to start. I think he's wondering why is he <laughs> sitting at the front. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Can I ask just very basically? Have you ever been aware of any woman in your life who has undergone or is undergoing, uh, always oh, going through menopause? Uh, yes, first of all, thank you for asking me the question. And uh, uh, I happened to be at the event that happened last year when we launched the book. Yes. Uh, and uh, that helped me. I have a mother who's almost 58 now. And uh, I was so uh, ignorant towards what she might have gone through. Uh, and it kind of enlightened me uh, on terms of the symptoms that women go through. Yeah. And I happened to go back and have a conversation with her. Uh, so that was a very sensitive moment. It was enlightening. At the same yes. time, uh, it helps you bond because yeah. you are more aware of things that women go through. And uh, it helps you, it equips you to kind of deal with that kind of an experience. Yeah. So I think it's a wonderful initiative. And I'm glad that we are spreading awareness about this. That's amazing. Can I ask, just to build on that, as a son, is it a difficult conversation to start with your mother? Did you find that it was something that she didn't want to discuss or come out with? Or was it something that she was actually waiting for you to possibly approach her and ask? I could, uh, honestly, I could sense a bit of apprehension uh, because uh, like we have been discussing and it was mentioned even uh, during the book launch last time that a lot of women are apprehensive to come out and 
uh, discuss the symptoms or uh, the excerpt that you read in the yes. book. That was a bit of a humorous take on it. But uh, let's be honest, it's not funny, uh, yep. the kind of things that they go through. And the kind of initiative helps people raise awareness and makes them sensitive towards this matter. So the husband was actually howling. Had he been aware, uh, he would have been more considerate and caring towards that. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's a great initiative. Yeah, but you know, I just want to tell men present over here that it's not uncommon that women don't talk about this to their families. And in fact, I think there was a study done by Abbott and Ipsos itself that said that 66% of women across the world don't want to talk to their family members about them going through menopause because they don't want to worry them. They don't want the family members to worry about their health concerns. So I think for the longest time, unfortunately, as women, it's been ingrained into us to constantly put our families first so that you know, we don't cause them any concern about how we're suffering or what our health concerns might be, that that kind of shuts us down. But thank you so much for sharing. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Um, OK, to pick somebody else. Everybody's sweating under their collars a little bit. Ki mujse mat pucho, mujse mat pucho. <laughs> Let me ask the gentleman who's laughing now about it. Chalo. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Has any woman, family member, partner, colleague ever spoken to you about symptoms that they may have been experiencing during menopause? You know, Lara, um, I, like most men, was blissfully unaware of the fact that menopause could have such significant impact on a woman's life or in, in a woman's life, right? Until my aunt, uh, she's my mom's younger sister, she walked up to me, and this is after she watched Bombay Bigums, yeah. okay? Um, and then she said, you know what? I've been sweating all the time. Uh, the fan's on, I switch on the AC, and I'm sweating. Uh, and everybody in the family is confused as to why am I sweating? They're saying, open the windows, get out into the open, etc., etc. So. I then went ahead and read up a little more about what this condition is all about and realized that it's just not a natural occurrence, but it's much beyond. And there are a significant percentage of women who actually experience severe symptoms. Yeah. And that could just be beyond sweats. And there's plenty more, including depression and so on and so forth. So I went ahead and not just spent time with her, explaining her about what would be the potential consequences. but. Also, my uncle is pretty much uh, like the gentleman in that story of Alexandria, right? So this man is, is fairly, um, let's say, not very sensitive. And therefore, I had to sit him down and also kind of walk him through what could be the potential consequences for the family. And ultimately, I could uh, put both of them together and make sure that they actually saw a doctor. So. Pretty fascinating. I think uh, Bombay Begums is, is, is a great example because yeah. uh, the protagonists, uh, the female protagonists in, in, in that series, have very openly spoken about uh, menopause and the potential yeah. uh, impact that it could have in, in women's lives. So, sure. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it amazing that today, at least in mainstream media, through our entertainment, A, we've got an amazing array of actresses now that are over the age of 30, 35, who are still, you know, headlining amazing content. And I think for me, that's one of the main reasons for my presence here today. I mean, I'm 45 years old, and I don't want to be approaching this chapter of my life with fear. You know, I don't want to be approaching it in ignorance. So I think the idea for me, apart from the fact that I come from a family of very strong women and largely women, so you know the experience is already there. But I think for me, it's about not just empowering myself, but as an artist, as an actor, to be able to empower other women. And I think that that's the need of the art, even within the entertainment industry. You know, but I just want people to know that most often, you know, we're talking about hot flashes, we're talking about things like this with menopause, but there are over 40 symptoms that women can face when they're going through undergoing menopause. And I'm sure we have a wonderful panel of doctors over here, very esteemed, very senior doctors who will talk about that more in detail. But it's important to understand that we can't just limit it to one or two or three symptoms and say, okay, I understand that, but I choose not to understand the rest of it. 
And um, yeah, I think on that note, maybe we'll open up this entire conversation. Absolutely. And thank you for setting the context so well. And thank you to the two gentlemen here in the yes, audience today great, for great sharing man. their personal thank experiences. <laughs> Um, and what a way to kickstart the panel discussion. We will begin with our panel discussion now. And for that, uh, please join me in welcoming our key experts, as Lara mentioned. Uh, our first panelist for today is Dr. Nozer Sheryar. He's consultant, obstetrician, and gynecologist at the PD Hinduja Breach Candy and Holy Family Hospital and former Secretary General of the Federation of Obstetric and Gynecological Societies of India, FOXI. He has also co-authored a book on perimenopause called Finding Your Balance. Dr. Nozer, lovely having you here today. Thank you. Our next expert on the panel is Dr. Suchitra Pandit. She's consultant, obstetrician, and gynecologist at the Surya Group of Hospitals in Mumbai. She's also been a former president of Foxy. Dr. Suchitra, thank you for joining us. And our last panelist for today is Dr. Rohita Shetty, Head of Medical Affairs at Abbott in India. Thank you, Dr. Rohita. Now, interestingly, if most of you remember, last year we were also joined by Shelly Chopra. She's the founder of She the People. She's also an author and an entrepreneur who moderated our last year's panel discussion. Didn't be taking it and everyone else, if they need it, can take them very safely. Okay, Do Dr. Pandit, um, you know, part of what we all are discussing here also puts the onus of being self-aware, raising your hand, making that call to a doctor on the women going through this. And that'll happen when they're more and more aware of the symptoms. So first part of my question is, do you really feel as a doc that women are even getting aware? And second part of it is that what is it that you tell them to watch out for in order for them to raise that mild alarm to say, okay, let me just go meet somebody and get this going on a, on a journey that will solve it or guide me. Right. Thanks, Shelley. Uh, as, uh, you know, Dr. Nozer rightly pointed out, women are not as aware of what they're going through simply because they don't want to accept that they have a problem. Now, as you know, you mentioned figures, that, you know, the Indian figures, some of them mentioned that 80% of women go through the menopause and probably, you know, it's just mild or moderate symptoms, but there are those 10 to 12% who are very severe and probably they will come up. But what about the remaining? Why are they suffering in silence? So, you know, some of the things like, you know, hot flushes, night sweats, simple thing like falling of hair, irritability, confusions, you know, the typical mind fog that women talk about and then back aches and some of them are you know like having vaginal dryness genital urinary symptoms they will talk about the irregular menses but then they don't want to come forward and if they ignore these symptoms these can get more severe and the severe ones they need to know about is you know these hot flushes and night sweats can become so severe they affect your sleep patterns and if your sleep patterns are affected you are more depressed, your quality of work suffers. Whether you're a homemaker or whether you know, you're know you working somewhere, both the things, the quality of life quotient is very, very important. And uh, you know the long-term symptoms women need to know. If you suffer for a long time, your cardiac, your heart is not going to be with you. One misconception I'd like to think, tell you that most of the people tend to think women don't get heart attacks, it's only the men who get it. But remember, at 48, 49, 50, our hormones, our estrogen has fallen down and we are as predisposed to cardiac events as men are. So therefore, and there's also a redistribution of abdominal fat because, you know, the lipid friendly, we call lipids, you know, it's the fats. So the heart friendly fats go down and the unfriendly ones start going up. And because of the redistribution of the fat, women also tend to put on a lot of weight around the be belly the metabolism reduces unless you're really, you know, someone like Lara Dutta who's into, you know, a lot of physical activity. And today you're seeing a lot more people doing that. But unless they learn that, you know, they will have long-term consequences in osteoporosis. You know, we tend to think osteoporosis is a silent killer. The bones get brittle and because of the vasomotor symptoms, the incidence of falls, the impact of the falls, the incidence of fractures goes high. So these are the long-term problems. And remember, breast cancer is something, you know, women fear. 
But in the fifth and the sixth decade of life, that's the time it's detected the, you know, the most. So prevention, nobody can prevent breast cancer, but at least you can diagnose it much more earlier. I mean, we're not trying to get medical, but you know, these are some of the realities. And Alzheimer's, you know, nobody knows really what causes it. But we definitely know that when you're in the postmenopausal phase, more women get into it. So activity-wise, you know, mental activity, physical activity, all these things women need to know. So change of your lifestyles. Eating well. You know, it's easy to say eat well, but what is eating well? A balanced diet. Good carbs, good amount of proteins, less of fats. Eat at the right time. You know, we tend to, Indian women or Indian families, tend to eat late at night, 10 o'clock, 10.30 when the husband comes, and then, you know, she'll just clear up, and then they are in bed watching telly. So <clears throat> that is one of the worst exercises one can do, is getting into bed soon after. So eat in time, drink plenty of fluids, have lots of fruits, nuts. And you know, today there are so many veggies around which are different. You know, you can have the salads, you can have whatever, but get onto a good diet, exercise well, walk well, think positive, sleep well. I think that's so important and have that health consciousness. So talk about your symptoms, don't, don't confine it to yourself and don't suffer silently, we're all there. You know, we as doctors are there, you know, we as influencers are there to tell women, speak up, speak up, yeah. and that's what they have to do. That's true, I know, I'm, I do admit that it's a long list, but I think when it comes from her, even I'm gonna pay attention to it. But you know, one part of this is um, our everyday work. So, Dr. Shetty, let's talk about just sensitizing a work environment, both at an individual level, at a corporation level. I know companies want to talk about it, but you know, they'll do it on that one single day by sending one emailer, and it's, it's still, it's not a word that they're very comfortable with, as they haven't been in the case of menstruation either. But I think one of the things that makes this audience here and the panel here very, very empowering is that we are speaking up, we are saying the terms they need to be called, and we're normalizing it. So from a conversation starter point of view, where does a corporation begin and how does a work environment change? So Shelly, before I get to the answer to your question, just a quick update. So Abbott, so we are one of the women leaders, I mean the therapy of uh, women's health, so we are leaders. And we are committed to empowering women, live healthy, take control of their own health. And we ensure and strive seamlessly to support them at every stage of their lives. So starting from a menarche to a menopause. So coming to menopause, so Shelly, I would like to tell you that there was a large scale robust survey which was conducted by Abbott. Okay, so this survey was basically to understand the local experience, the quality of life impacting the women in the menopausal space, okay, and what do the caregivers feel about these women. So out of this survey, there is one stat which I would like to tell you. So, 73% of women, when I say women, these are the working women in the menopausal age group. They feel the need to take leave from work because of the menopausal symptoms. So this is India, but when I have to talk on the global front, so there is a study which was done in the United Kingdoms. Okay, so this was also a study done in the working population by the Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development. Even that study stated a 63% increase in the stress level in the menopausal age group women because of these symptoms. So in all, the working women, as you rightly mentioned, so these women are in that stage of the career where they are actually doing amazingly well. They are leaders in the industry, they are assets to the organization. These leaders make a difference to the lives of the people they are working alongside. So it's a moral duty to support these women. So when you talk about Abbott, so we do our bit. Firstly, we do tie up with healthcare professionals and societies to make women menopause aware. They're supposed to know what they're supposed to expect when they transition into the stage of life. We've launched the next chapter so that there are more authentic stories to relate to and they can have more transparent and open conversation. And Shelia, as Lara had mentioned, there's something coming up very soon in the next few minutes for the audience out here and a very interesting tool which will also help these working women live life better and live life to the fullest. 
So, you know, one of the things that we shouldn't forget is at the time that women get their menopause symptoms in the working environment, they're actually no longer workers, they're leaders. Absolutely. And they literally are at the place where they could not just drive some change. They could make the men uncomfortable. And why do I use the word uncomfortable? Because it takes time for them to get used to understanding what are the various things that, uh, you know, women go through at the workplace and how much of the workplace goes back with them, which is another big part of their stress that you talked about. So let's talk about stress. I think you kind of talked about the film industry and the entertainment industry. Other than somebody mentioning Bombay Begums and hopefully there'll be more stuff coming up, we don't like talking about these things, right? I mean, women's health. Doc, you only go to doctors for good news, <laughs> pretty much it. Just curious what your experience is and if you are sensing change. Uh, while, ah, okay, the laughter gives it away. <laughs> <laughs> See, let's, let's, let's break it down. I mean, it's wonderful, of course, and it's very, very important to talk about statistics and it's very, very important to talk about the very technical aspects, the medical aspects of um, menopause. But I think the one thing that we can all relate to is personal stories, right? Personal experiences. Yeah. That's what makes it palatable. That's what makes it say, oh, that happened to me. I get that. So for me, Shelley, I mean, I've been in an industry, everybody knows, is very, very male driven. I mean, we're fighting many things on many levels and some wonderful women that have come before me have paved the path, made it easier for me. I continue to do the same for women that will come after me. So, you know, I mean, we've, we won't bring them up here, but there are many things, pay parity, misogyny, inclusion, blah, blah, blah. One of the things that I've faced in my workspace itself is male colleagues telling me years ago, um, what is wrong with you? Are you on your period or what? Really? <laughs> and I can promise you, I cannot be the only woman who's experienced that. I mean, we face it in every industry, regardless of where we're at, you know? That why are you being so crabby today? What's gotten into you? Are you on your period? Yeah, maybe I am, you know, but so what? It doesn't change me from the way that I am on any other day, excuse me, <laughs> that's signing up for inhabiting this planet with the opposite sex called women, you know. But um, again, to put it into context, let me um, describe, so the man that I'm married to, wonderful man, Mr. Mahesh Bhupati, is a sports person, right? He's been taught since childhood to grind through the pain. I mean, the man is a wall, literally. You can hit him with a Grand Slam win, you can hit him with a loss at the final, you can hit him with a first round loss. The expression and the whatever is exactly the same because that's how he's been reared. Grind through the pain. Now for a man like that to understand why the woman is gone off the rails one day, I mean, for him, he hasn't been raised in the manner to understand that there needs to be empathy or there needs to be understanding or there needs to be sensitivity. And then divine justice, the man has had a deep flying off my handle. So I say, let's work out a strategy. If you feel it boiling up inside you, you shall walk away and go to another room. And you will tell your family that if mom's walking away, you will not follow her. You will not pester her. You will not ask her what happened. Give her space, she will be back in 10 minutes and she will handle it more rationally. Because if she didn't do this, she'll spend the next 24 hours feeling guilty and terrible that I said things I shouldn't have. So these are small things, these don't need medications. Yeah. But again, I'm going to stress here, I have, I have all the respect for my colleagues, the psychiatrists and the counsellors, and it's time to call out the big guns when required, but for that you have to recognize it. Now to recognize it is some very simple things you can do. There are online scales where you can give yourself a self-test, which will actually tell you where you are. There's something called a DAS scale. We modified it for a book. It will tell you anxiety, anger, depression, and then you can deal with it a lot better. This is mental health. I just have to finish by mentioning one other aspect which is the elephant in the room which is not recognized, and that is sexuality. Yeah. This is something people have, have, have suffered in silence, and that is unacceptable. Part of it is physical, that can be fixed. Hormones can make 
the, the vaginal dryness and things better. Women know that they are not alone. I started a support group. I think all of you know that in one sense. So began writing a blog about my experiences when blogs were in. But actually the real story really from my side would be um, that I started believing in the sisterhood of wellness and that is really true because um, many times I would think that, you know, the way we are um, raised, right, you've got to just get this done. And I would say each time more and more women who I spoke to would say, to get this done, I reinvent the wheel every day. I learn from scratch. And that just seemed like such a futile exercise. <laughs> it seemed like, why should I have to learn this from scratch if somebody else has solved this problem? Where is she? Why don't I find her, right? <laughs> and that became such a big thing for me to drive, saying, let's find that woman who's done parenting at 35 for the first time. That was me, and I wanted somebody to tell me, how do you become a mom at 35 and deal with it? Or, you know, entering a phase when you're saying, I'm on my fourth startup. Where is a person who can tell me, how is it to start, fail, grow, start, fail, grow again. So I think in many ways, um, that is really the, the real truth that I have enjoyed um, coming face to face. And many ways, it's what I feel when I went across to another woman, she said, you know what, I was looking for someone like you too. So it was about making that beginning and saying that um, this is really the person I think I want to be. Uh, this is not the real or made up. This is my true experience. It may be sometimes good, sometimes ugly, but it's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you so much for sharing. All right. So, Falguni, can yes. we have you next? Sure. Okay. So it says the one lesson menopause has taught me is real is to love myself the way I am and appreciate my body. And the made up is that sisterhood is everything. Women need to support each other and mine. So while both of these are true, I think uh, my own experience says as I evolved as a human is two words, self-worth and tribe. So self-worth is understanding that you, it's okay to prioritize yourself. It's okay to understand your body and what you are going through. So just to give, give you my personal anecdote, like when the doctor was mentioning, I could, there was a deja vu in my mind. Because when I told my uh, general physician, a family doctor, about palpitations, suddenly hot flushes, suddenly uh, the mind fog that we keep talking about, and uh, he asked me some cardiac test, surprisingly. And I'm saying, oh, but by the way, I'm also passing through my peri and pre-menopause phase. And he's like, what is 100% women? Ko hota. Isme naya kya hai? <laughs> so, you know, understanding your self-worth and still putting foot, your foot down and saying that, no, I need to go and check up with my gynec. I don't, I'm not satisfied with this answer. So I think Lara's statement that we are taught in a way our conditioning is such that family first, we are next. I think that has to change. If not now, when? That is my question. And the second word tribe is you need a lot of emotional support from your tribe because I truly believe your tribe gives you your vibes. So the support that you draw from your partner, your children, your colleagues, your best friend, I think that works a long way in your emotional strength because emotionally also you're going through a lot many things and you, you, you have to be at peace that yes, it's palpitations, but you're not going to die the next minute out of a cardiac arrest and for that it's very important to talk. So I use also my social media channels to have conversations around these difficult things as I myself have passed through six years of very tough infertility cycle. And I, I want to break the taboo that it's not a taboo. You need to have conversations around everything, right? From periods to infertility, to motherhood, to marriage, to stereotypes, a lot of unlearning, mental conditioning, breaking it. So self-worth and tribe. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, the one thing that, you know, kind of resonated with me is your vibe attracts your tribe. I think that's so important, you know, to kind of showcase yeah. uh, what you are and give strength to other women. So on that note, Lara. No. Yes. <laughs> my turn. Okay. To help other women in my life going through menopause, I plan to, real, write a booklet about my experience, made up, start a chat group where we can share our experience, or mine. Okay. You know, I can imagine you doing all these things, but we want to hear what you would. Yes, I, I, I could possibly do all of these things. But guys, I think the most important thing is that all of us today, 
with everything that we're exposed to, right, everything that we have access to, we've all become Google, Instagram, TikTok doctors. All of us. So even for women, we're bombarded constantly on an everyday basis with so much information. Today, if you really want to know what you're going through, you by mistake click on one thing and it will throw up, the machinery will throw up multiple posts about the same thing. So I could be reading about Sicardian health and intermittent fasting and it all sounds amazing fixes to what I am going through. But at the end of the day, are they the experts? Are they the people who really know what my personal experience is? And because it's worked for someone else, is it going to work for me? So you know what? No, I do not want to write a booklet. I want to be part of something like the launch of the next chapter book. I want it to come from people who have had, who have put in time, effort, money, research on actually getting you the right kind of information. I want to be part of a starter kit, which actually moves forward from where we actually left off, which gives you an opportunity. I don't know where to start. All this sounds amazing, but am I really going to go home now and sit down and say, Acha beta, aajao, let's talk about menopause. <laughs> where do we begin? You know, so this is incredible. I would actually encourage every single man here, take even two or three of these cards, carry them around in your pocket. And you know what? Yes, create the opportunity to maybe whip one out. I don't know, it can become your next party trick. Make it your own, own it. Let it be something that you can actually start by initiating a conversation rather than waiting for it to happen. And I think also, again, doctor, see, this is what I'm telling you. I came here with a thought and I had it and now it's gone because it's brain fog. <laughs> and also I'm talking really fast, so I keep missing what I wanted to um, say. But this, this really is, I think for me, the important part of what I really want to do with menopause. And most importantly, I want to be able to share experiences like this with people who are the experts. So to be on this stage today with Dr. Noser, to be here with Dr. Pandit is so empowering for me. And I know that I read all these terms when, I have, when I'm looking through things because I have access to it. So I'm reading about HRT and I'm reading about you know, hormone replacement therapy. But it's easy to, for me to have access to it, not necessarily to a larger part of the Indian women audience. So I know that today when I talk about it, being who I am, it will ring tr true to somebody else. Someone might actually say, Kya, ki, kis cheez ki baat kar Kya hai ye HRT? They might actually get up to go and do their own research or even speak to their medical practitioner you know, about it. So I think that for me, the most important thing that I can do is not stop talking, much to everybody else's dismay. <laughs> we wish you would never stop talking and continue to have conversations on menopause. Thank you, Lara. Um, all right, and now, of course, Riri. Okay, so talking to my family about menopause is great because uh, it means they give me extra support and help around the house. Real made up. Wrap up today's session is uh, we hope that this conversation starter actually anchors or fuels more conversations, becomes like an important tool not only for women but for the men and for the for the entire support group around women to kind of help them have conversations and make sure that they get the right support at the right time. On that note, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today in this most important conversation. Thank you for our, to our panelists uh, and to our influencers. Thank you for joining us today. And we hope to gather once again very soon to take this conversation forward. Um, on that note, thank you so much. Um, Please stay around, mingle, have conversations. Uh, we have given you the conversation starter. Um, uh, just a token of appreciation from our side. Please, we encourage you to use these cards. Pass it on to the people who need them.